Uh, so I grew up in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and my memory of that it was the winters were very cold, very dark, and there wasn't a lot to do in terms of creative work. So I think I was starting to make art from a very, very early age. And it made sense for me to continue on eventually to start art school. Um, Saskatchewan, I don't know in terms of art sort of community, but I felt that moving on at least to the next province over. So I did my art school in uh, Calgary at the Alberta College of Art and Design. And I had relatives there, so it was kind of an easy move. But um, my family's not really creative. I think I'm really the only really creative person in my family. So it made sense for me to kind of move out of that situation, that community, that space that wasn't really meant for what I wanted to do in terms of creative work. So it made sense for me to move on, I think. Yeah, so I did my undergrad in Calgary, uh, I think this was 2001. I started, so at the Alberta College of Art and Design, and then I was there for a few years after graduating, kind of trying to make art, had a studio, working within the community, working and trying to get shows and different things, and then I decided to move again <laughs> to a larger sort of art scene. Um, I was thinking somewhere in Ontario, so Western was a good, was a good place for me to do that. Um, well, in Saskatoon, there was a great gallery. I think it's changed now because I think it's called something else. Uh, the Mendel Art Gallery used to be a very, really, really good public art gallery in Saskatoon that uh, my family and I would visit often. And they would have a lot of great collections there, local artists, Saskatchewan artists, but also work from around the world, usually. And I remember seeing... Um, I think it was Frida Kahlo even had a show there at some point, like her work was there. Um, so I, I remember that gallery as being very influential. I think I was just there a lot. And I did spend a lot of time in the library as a kid and I used to look at books, I think based on what kind of books they had. So it wasn't like this was my taste or anything, but I think that ma mainly the books I was looking at were like German expressionist <laughs> painters. Um, so I was really, really involved in just pouring hours, pouring through books, uh, lots of hours looking at books and looking at artists. Um, and I think it was just a natural thing mm -hmm. for me to do. Okay. Um, in terms of other people influencing me though, I think I felt pretty isolated in um, Saskatchewan, in Saskatoon, like as a, as a kid, as a creative kid, I guess. So it only really made sense to me in high school when there was like an art class that art was probably the thing that I was really good at. So that's a big question too. Um, I think the biggest challenge for a lot of artists going back to school and trying to make art, trying to learn more about making art and trying to do things for the community in the community, I think basically financial problems would be, would be high on that list. Um, money for school, money for a studio, it, you're basically paying two rents, like it's, it's really, really hard. Um, doing that and then finding a job. Uh, usually artists do well with part-time work and of course that wasn't really available as much um, in Calgary when I was there so I had to sort of try the full-time job situation but that really is not great for creative work. It's very very draining kind of intellectually emotionally like uh, the time that I had usually outside of work so I would work like nine to five all week. I felt that that time was so precious that I couldn't waste it and so I ended up doing probably more work for other people than my own work and that was the situation that I remember in Calgary especially. I was writing reviews, I was working, I was on a couple of artist run boards at the time um, trying to trying to be in the community, trying to participate in the community but only during sort of the, the hours that I could put in. So inevitably I think that really squashes like creative work in itself so I felt that was really really hard to do and I didn't really understand how to maybe manage that until I was outside of that that full-time job world so that's when I went back to school well uh, for one thing curating was it was a suggestion by DNA art space they were thinking of having a lot of local artists try to curate a show, maybe for the first time emerging curators. I don't know that I would do that necessarily again. 
Um, it's a lot of work having to sort of organize work with artists from different locations and get everything together in time. And it was a very short period of time that I did that. So I don't know that I would do that again. I think it was a good experience, um, but in terms of time management, I think time management is the highest um, problem, challenge for artists in terms of what can they actually give, what are they, allowed, what are they able to give, what can they afford to give to the community in terms of time. So time management, um, artists often are asked to contribute in some way that it, it's assumed a little bit that we have all the time in the world to sort of contribute or be around or show up to things, but it's, it's really about how much time are we able to give. So I think for me, the time management thing has changed and I'm really, really picking and choosing and doing a lot less than I did in the past. So for me, it's like, how many part-time jobs <laughs> do I have right now? What are maybe two things I can do this year for the community? Like, what's, what can I contribute to maybe um, an auction at Forest City? Or what can I write, or write a couple of things this year, something like that. But it really is about being careful to do my own work. And that's really, really hard when those jobs, sometimes they come all at once, and then sometimes you're not working, so. I think that's the hardest thing. Uh, that depends a lot on the place that I'm teaching. So at Western, um, in terms of the teaching positions, like there's, there's a small number of positions that are available for part-time sessional instructors. And usually in terms of painting, there's maybe usually two courses that are available. One is a generalized intro to painting course in which I teach a lot of students that are actually not from the art department. So you get like science students, you get like math students who are coming in, they're like, what? <laughs> like some of them haven't even painted anything. So I get a huge range of students because I will get students in that class who have painted before. So I have to somehow manage to make that class accessible and useful for a wide range of students. And yet at the same time, make it an interesting class for myself putting things into the, those courses that have something to do with my own work. So I'll do like an intro to abstraction, intro to figurative painting, intro to landscape or something like that. Um, but I've learned every year you have to really have to make that even more accessible than it is because a lot of these students actually don't have even an art historical background. And so you have to kind of build that a little bit into the course. But if it's a half course, if it's like January to April, like you can't teach an art history course and a studio course, like cram it in there. So it's, 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 a lot, it's a lot to take on and it's a lot of stress in terms of wanting to teach something that is useful and that makes sense to students who are coming in at a really introductory level. So um, I did teach a course at Museum London. Uh, that was a totally, it was a drop-in situation where uh, people who maybe just like to paint, they would come in. But it wasn't as structured as the Western courses. Like, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't able to really make it work for me because it was more like a drop-in situation where people would come in, they come in at whatever time they wanted to do it. So it was hard for me to make that useful for them, sort of across the board. So I like the Western course, I like the sessional course. But again, it's not always available every year, since I have to apply for it every year. So it's not guaranteed. Something I wanted to mention that was a great experience, well, <clears throat> I think any time I've actually gone back to school has been really great, and of course, I think I may be one of those artists who would prefer to maybe be in school for maybe longer than is necessary, just because it is such a nice, structured, secure situation. Um, so being in school, going back to school, those are really great experiences, but um, ACAD, I felt it, there's a lot of problems with the program when I was there, but one of the great things about ACAD was that they had an artist student run gallery within the building that students could actually apply for um, and install shows for the first time. And then the public, like the art, the art scene, the actual art scene would come and visit your show. So it was really, really like, it was a legitimate art show. Um, that was, I really was proud of that when I had my first show. And um, that sort of got me rolling, thinking, yes, you can actually make things happen. You can actually do things and people, you know, support you. So I think from that, I was like wanting to 
contribute to the art scene, um, again, very competitive, very few jobs for artists, lots of volunteer work. So I was joining uh, artist run center boards to sort of be more involved with the art scene that way. And I think from the ACAD experience that made me feel more encouraged that I could actually do this, that I was actually valued in the community. I think when you start an art school um, experience, you're like, what? I, don't, I have no idea what this means. I don't know what being an artist is. I don't know what, how you do an exhibition. Like, how does that even work? And I think, I think uh, ACAN's really great in sort of building these micro situations where you can actually practice that and it makes you comfortable. And you're like, yeah, this is good. I can do this in the world outside of school. So, and I think grad school is similar. It's just a way more uh, concentrated, smaller group of people that you're with and uh, the challenges are bigger. But again, it's like practicing to kind of go out in the world and really like do things that are outside of your comfort zone. So I think grad school is kind of like challenging all the things that you think you know or believe about your work or that you rely on to think about your work. And it's really questioning you being like, well, where does that knowledge come from? Like, how did you start to believe in those things? How did you start to think about th those things? Like go back to the beginning of that thought and go to the end and really think about like, what is that knowledge? What does that mean in, the, in a larger sense? So I was thinking about that question because that was on your list and that's a big question. It's a really big question and the first thing that came to mind was uh, Zadie Smith. You may have heard of her as a, a writer. She's a writer, she's a British author. I think she lives in Brooklyn. Uh, now, but she uh, has some really great things that she's said about creativity. Now, her being a writer, I mean, she says a lot of things that can be applied to creativity in general. And one of the things she says about creativity is that it's about reflecting what's in the world, but it's also about talking about and creating ideas about what things could be, like beyond what we know or what we think we know. Um, and for writing, that makes sense, but also for art, I think art is always about making things that we haven't seen before or reflecting things in the world that we haven't seen them reflected in that way before. So in that way, it's about challenging notions of what's normal, about what we expect, about what we rely on, I think. Um, and in terms of creativity, I think it's important for, I think it's important for people to know that um, Artwork is valued, uh, makes sense in the world in different ways. You've got artists who love to make work, just whatever they make. They just do a lot of work and they just make a lot of work and show a lot of work. But it really depends on, and I'm rambling a bit, sorry. <laughs> Creativity, yeah, that's a big question. Um, I think in terms of being creative, it's hard to talk about how other people may see that. Like I can talk only in terms of myself being a creative person, being an artist. Uh, for me, it's really important and able to, um, it's important for me in terms of sort of to be, to be healthy in the world, to be, to be sort of, um, to be able to do the things that come naturally to me, but to be able to communicate in the way that I naturally communicate, like to find a way to do that. There's a lot of situations in life, whether it's your job, whether it's, you know, everyday communication that do not really have room or not conducive for that kind of creativity. And I think being able to make it in the studio, to be able to show it, to communicate it in the way that I can do, I think that's, it's an amazing thing to be able to do. Um, and I think, I think that's a big thing in terms of finding a way to f find a way for you to to talk about things to create things to do things in the way that is natural for you that maybe other places in life other s spaces in life don't really nourish and for me painting makes sense but also writing is a really great way to do that it's creativity is not necessarily always about like um, doing whatever you want all the time, everything you do is amazing, let's all celebrate that. That's part of art. But I think inherently like within really great art, whether it's writing or artworks or a film or music, it's about kind of resisting something 
resisting some sort of idea about what we think is normal or correct or right. Or It's really about values. It's about a kind of ethics of living. It's about sort of an ethics of like how do you want to be in the world. And oftentimes artworks, whether it's writing and, or painting or whatever it is, can reflect a different way to do that, I think. So for me, painting is a strange, strange thing to do. It's in, in terms of how does it communicate and what does it communicate, it's a little bit like poetry in a way because poetry is not direct necessarily. Uh, it's economical, it, it chooses very specific ways to talk about something, uh, but you really have to kind of get in there and, and use what you're given and kind of make something out of it. And for painting, for me, especially abstract painting or painting that is seems more abstract, you really have to kind of come into the work with your expectations about what maybe what you think painting should give you. And when it doesn't give you all of that information, it's not a figurative work, it's not representation, you really have to kind of look at the work on its own terms and build something with the work. It's kind of like a building something together with the work and yourself. So this is something that I feel Painting's really good at, poetry's really good at, music's really good at, um, but usually work that is challenging in some way, but also is talking about something that maybe that person hasn't seen before. Yeah, and I think, I think that, whatever that is, whatever that reciprocal relationship is, like I don't have control over and I probably will never see, because it's, I mean, all, all the artwork will be out there and I won't be able to see necessarily what's going on between it and the audience. So it's not about me necessarily being able to control that or to predict that even. I think what I can control a little bit is a little bit of the the framework where the work is being shown. Maybe some kind of text surrounding the work, um, whether it's a group show or where it's being shown amongst other works, uh, other exhibitions nearby. Like I can sort of think about that. I can think about what works to show and how that kind of creates a suggestion of space, suggestion of, of a body of work. But I have very little in terms of control, uh, in terms of how people are actually going to come to the work and build that sort of co-authorship, that sort of situation where they're bringing what they think they want to know about the work and they're not getting all of that information, so they have to sort of find a different way to get that information through visual, through sort of looking at that work, looking at what that work is doing and saying to them in the space, and sort of understanding, well, this is what I'm given, I, I use this, rather than it's deflecting, it's kind of like giving you a lot of information that you don't necessarily know how to interpret. So it is about learning a new language, in a way, with and for and about painting. So, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know if you've read poetry or, or try to understand poetry. I remember um, in high school, I think a lot of people understand and remember the situation where Shakespeare, it comes up in terms of what, what the class has to deal with. And I've always found it a uh, very, not easy, but a way to get into it is to sort of just go with the gist of what is being said. And it's easy to sort of follow that and make up some kind of meaning. And so the idea of making meaning, like like literally making, you're making it. So you're not you're not finding it, you're not coming to the work with meaning, someone's not giving it to you, you're actually making it. So you're making meaning with the work and yourself. So it has to be something about building in time. So for me, that's really important in terms of any artwork, I think. I think traditionally, um, artists, it depends on the gallery, but sometimes the gallery will end up writing a sort of press release for the artist. Uh, the artist's statement is not necessarily something that's always available or necessary for the exhibition. It really depends on what you're writing and what audience it's for. If it's an artist statement, you really have to sort of say what you what your work is doing in like three sentences, which is like the hardest thing to write. Um, so for me, 
like for the exhibition that I have in Toronto currently, um, there was a writer that was uh, commissioned to write about the exhibition. And we had an interview and we talked about some things beyond and with the work. So that was a really good situation. But in terms of what I was writing, like I was like, oh, I have to come up with a title for this exhibition. It's just really difficult. So I came up with this title and I had a little story behind it, a little text that I wrote about it and that was included within the text. That wouldn't necessarily always happen. Um, so I think it's based on the exhibition, based on the situation, whether my writing will actually be involved in that. Um, but in terms of me setting up the exhibition with a text, um, there's a lot of great things that, great ways, interesting ways that artists both complain about and talk about how to write about or talk about or title their own work. Um, there's a lot of theories about, if you listen to artists talking about, they'll talk about, well, you can't talk about it in a direct way, you can't explain the work before people have even seen it. You kind of have to set them up a little bit, start them off with an idea, and then let them kind of go, go from there. So that's hard. <laughs> that's a hard thing to do. So I think, I think in terms, thinking again about poetry, like really kind of being direct in a sort of a, an abstract way and setting things up, but the, the, the sort of the reader, the viewer, the reception of the work has to do with that, that making of meaning again. And in a way, it's about me not telling everything to the, the audience, but it's about me giving them some information and allowing them to then build something from that which I think is really important.